Hello guys, this is Game Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So today's video is another CPU comparison, this time in between CPUs of the same price range as of today, of course. In this case, the Ryzen 5 3600 non-X versus the Ryzen 5 3600 XT versus the i5 11400F. So for example, the Ryzen 5 3600 stands in between $180 to $220, depending on the store and country, of course. And the same applies to the Ryzen 5 3600 XT, which is a bit more difficult to get, but it is inside the, the same price bracket, usually in between $190 to $230, depending on the store and country. As for the i5 11400F, it is usually, as for now, it is usually around $180, $190. So, which CPU to get? That's why I'm making this video. As for the Ryzen 5 3600 XT, thanks AMD for sending the CPU. As for the Ryzen 5 3600 and the i5 11400F, I bought them with my own money. And of course, with the help of today's sponsor. For today's sponsor, we have GVG Mall, where you can acquire your Windows 10 Home serial key for only $16. And using my SKEG discount code, will get you 20% off, making it only $11. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and after getting it, you simply need to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. So guys, let's go to the benchmarking. Today's first game is Assassin's Creed Valhalla using the X12 and high settings. As you can see at 1080p and 1440p, the results are pretty much the same apart from the 1% lows, where the i5 11400F tends to be a bit better. That is because AC Valhalla is extremely GPU heavy and even at 1080p with a card as powerful as the RX 6800 and over 100 average FPS, the bottleneck is still the GPU, hence the difference being minimal. At 1440p and 4K, it seems that SAM works better with the Ryzen CPUs delivering 1 to 3 frame rates more than the i5 11400F, which is nothing that could be noticed in real gaming though. Overall, great results for the three CPUs. Now with the old but cool CSGO, where cheaters call you cheater. We're using very low settings with texture streaming and player boost contrast on. Ryzen 3000 series got a major uplift in CSGO performance comparing to the previous Ryzen 2000 series. And Ryzen 5000 series raised those numbers even more, as you can see in the video above. Intel 10th gen CPUs were actually slower in CSGO than Ryzen 3000 series and less highly overclocked. But as you can see, the 11th generation i5 11400F is faster than a Ryzen 5 3600 XT, even using 200 to 300 MHz less, which is very nice. At 4K, we aren't still 100% GPU bottleneck, so even there, we can see the i5 11400F pushing around 10% more FPS than the Ryzen competitors. Still, all the CPUs here can push more FPS than the usual gamer will ever need in this game. So, 
that's pretty fine for me. Now with Far Cry New Dawn using the X11 and Ultra settings. I love using this game in my tests even though I don't play it much. Why? Because it is great to test CPUs and RAM since it is extremely sensitive to single core performance and RAM frequency and timings. And it confirms what Intel said about having way higher IPC in the 11th gen. As you can see here, even with 200MHz less, the F5-11400F is kicking the Ryzen 5 3600 in the nuts getting around 15 average FPS more and most importantly around 12 FPS more in the 1% lows. This at 1080p and 1440p. At 4K things are the same with the F5 delivering way better results in the 1% lows, with a 6 FPS difference, which is around 8% more. Pretty nice results overall. Now with the beloved Horizon Zero Dawn using the X12 and high settings. In my previous video of the i3 10100F vs Ryzen 3 3100, the 10100F completely destroyed Ryzen 3 3100 in this game. And although the i5-11400F does not destroy the Ryzen 5 3600 XT nor the non-XT version, it is still delivering better performance than the Ryzen CPUs at 1080p, where there is no GPU bottleneck, and a bit better at 1440p where the bottleneck is not presented in all scenarios. At 4K we get 100 GPU bottlenecked, so the results are within the margin of error due to that. Overall this game is heavier on the CPU core count side and not particularly on the IPC and single core performance ones, hence the differences being really small. Let's move to the next game. Now with Ghost Recon Breakpoint where the i3 10100F completely murdered the Ryzen 3 3100. Here we have a similar scenario at 1080p and 1440p. The i5-11400F delivers around 30 average FPS more and around 20 FPS more in the 1% lows, which is actually a lot. And for people playing on high refresh rate monitors, it will be a delight having those extra FPS. Sam makes almost no difference at 1080p with the i5, but gets us a decent boost of 10 average FPS once we go to 1440p. At 4K, interestingly enough, Ryzen CPUs shows once again that they work better with Sam in most games, since once the GPU bottleneck appears, Ryzen CPUs with Sam actually deliver up to 5 average FPS more in this game. But that's nothing that wasn't quite expected since Sam was made with Ryzen and Radeon products in mind. Demons walk with him. Now with Cyberbug, I mean Cyberpunk 2077, using the X12 and custom settings, basically high settings with four of them set to medium. As for results, this game is really, really heavy on the CPU, but usually with people jumping to higher resolutions, you'll most likely run into a GPU bottleneck in any situation, unless of course you have a really bad CPU or you have a really strong GPU and play at 1080p. Anyway, 
As you can see, when not using SAM, the i5 11400F gets us a little bit more FPS than the Ryzen CPUs, but when we activate SAM, the averages become the same, being the only difference in the 1% lows, with Ryzen 5 3600 possibly having a stutter and having only 90 FPS in the 1% lows. At 4K, we have similar results across the board with or without SAM, since we run into a full GPU bottleneck. Now with Need for Speed Heat, if you're into benchmarking CPUs and RAM, this is one of the games you can't miss. Test it here on the resort circuit and you'll have interesting results. This game is very sensitive not only to core count but also single core performance and IPC in its essence. The i5 11400F has higher IPC than the Ryzen CPUs and that reflects into the FPS numbers here that are clearly higher with the i5. At 1080p we have around 10 average FPS more, which in this case is a bit more than 10%, while also having a small boost of 1% lows. The same applies to 1440p, and while at 4K our averages are the same due to a GPU bottleneck obviously, we still have higher 1% lows with the i5, which is really nice. Overall, a fair win to the i5 11400F. The last game of today is Civilization 6 using the X12 and high settings in the graphics benchmark. Civilization 6 is widely known to rely on CPU, a lot, and is one of the few games where I can actually see the Ryzen 7 3800 XT getting better performance than the Ryzen 5 5600 X, as you can see in the video link above. Ryzen 5 3600 was also faster than the i5 10400F, but the situation changes with the new i5 11400F, that is now faster by a good margin. I noticed some things in these tests though, for example Ryzen 5 3600 is a bit faster than the non-XT variant of course, but when activating SAM, things get a little strange. At both 1080p and 1440p, the i5 11400F loses a lot of FPS while the Ryzen CPUs maintain more or less the same numbers with only minimal decreases. And on top of that, Ryzen 5 3600 XT actually gets a performance boost at 1440p. Strange. As for the i5, I guess that may be later fixed with driver updates or even BIOS updates. Who knows? At 4K, SAM now actually helps all CPUs a bit and shows once again that Ryzen CPUs use SAM in a better way when running into a heavy GPU bottleneck. Very interesting results. Today's last benchmarks are the usual Cinebench R15 and R20. Here we can see once again the IPC and multi-threading improvements that Intel claimed before. While the i5-10400F actually had way lower results than its Ryzen counterparts, the i5-11400F now matches them in some scenarios and surpasses them in others. In terms of single core performance, it is a clear win to the i5, and although it loses in terms of multi-threading on Cinebench R15, it actually manages to beat the Ryzen 5 3600 and match the Ryzen 5 3600 XT when it comes to Cinebench R20, which is interesting to see. All CPUs have the same cores and threads, and it is the IPC and multi-threading efficiency that marks the difference here, since the frequency difference is not that much. Let's now move to the conclusion. So let's start from the beginning, performance. As for performance, there are no doubts that the i5-11400F is superior in every possible way. I mean, at least in gaming, apart from a specific scenario in, in terms of rendering, encoding or decoding, uh, the i5-11400F is clearly superior, and even in those scenarios, the i5-11400F is equal 
or than superior uh, comparing to the Ryzen CPUs at the same price. So guys, final opinion, if you already have a motherboard and have for example a Ryzen 1000 series or 2000 series and want an upgrade, yes, the Ryzen 5 3600 and the 3600 XT are a pretty good option because you already have the motherboard, so just update your motherboard bias and go on. If you are building a new PC, then I advise you to go Z490 or B560 and get the i5-11400F. You can later also upgrade to, uh, let's say, an i7 or an i9, i9, and you'll be completely fine anyway with any GPU in the market right now. So, yeah, that's my opinion. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget, hit like, subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot. And well, without much more to say, See you in the next one, I guess, which will be most likely uh, a GPU comparison in between the RX 6700 XT, the RX, I mean the RX 5700 XT, 6700 XT and the 6800. As for my pronouns, sorry about it because um, I'm a bit constipated, so yeah, as usual. See you in the next video, guys.